Hey Dev Nation, I hope you guys are having a great day. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at the Holy Grail of investing. Now, this is a concept that was created by Ray Dalio. And he has a video pretty much explaining the whole idea. I'm gonna make sure to leave a link to that in the description below. But I know personally for me, and just talking to other investors, when you first watch the video, it can be very hard to sort of understand and consume. So the goal of today's video is to go ahead and break down what exactly is the Holy Grail of investing now just break it down and make it a lot simpler to understand and how you might be able to use it uh, when you go ahead and, you know, if you want to invest. And so pretty much starting off, I mean, the holy grail of investing, the idea is just like with any pretty much investment, go ahead and maximize your returns while minimizing the amount of risk that you're taking on. All right. So if I have thousand dollars, how can I go ahead and maximize the amount of money I make back from that thousand dollars? while lowering or keeping as low as possible the amount of risk I have to take on when I go ahead and invest. So we're gonna go ahead and actually take a look at the Holy Grail of Investing graph and break it down to simplify it so we can better understand just the key ideas and key points to take away from it. And then we're gonna go ahead and walk through some examples. So don't be scared of the chart, you know, we're just gonna take a look and again, really just try to simplify what it actually means. And then we're gonna take a look at how we can actually apply that to investing. Taking a look at the graph, we see on the left-hand side is annual portfolio standard deviation. And that's pretty much just gonna be a measurement of how we measure the amount of risk we're taking on. And at the bottom, we see is the number of assets uh, or alphas in portfolio. So it's gonna be your, just your investments, pretty much like uh, stocks, gold, real estate, different things like that. Then we also see uh, on the right-hand side within the graph, this 60% correlation, this 40% correlation, 20%, 10%, and 0% correlation. The correlation, um, I know when I first heard about it, I, just, I did not understand, but it, pretty much you can think of it as like relationship. So it's a relationship between two given assets. Then on the right-hand side, we see return to risk ratio. And then we have probability of losing money within a given year. Now with the holy grail of investing, the really big key takeaway is to go ahead and find assets that have as low correlation as possible, or in other words, that have very low relationships between each other. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at a very uh, basic example, and we're going to simplify it even more by not using different assets such as gold and stocks or real estate. We're just going to keep it all in, within one asset. We're going to take a look at stocks, and we're pretty much going to go ahead and take a look at these different relationships all within the stock market. Again, this is just to simplify it a bit more so we don't have to worry about gold or stocks or real estate. We can just all take pretty much take a look at one type of asset. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at an investment um, right here that has high correlation. So taking a look, uh, a high correlation stock would be a, uh, a stock that have two stocks that have a high relationship with each other. So in this example, we have Coca-Cola and Pepsi. Now, when you think about it, they're both beverage companies. Now, yeah, Pepsi has their chips and whatnot, but you can think of it as they have a high correlation. They have a high relationship amongst each other. Uh, usually, if you're willing to drink soda and drink, I don't know, Coke, from time to time, you might want to go ahead and grab a Pepsi product or vice versa, right? They have, again, a high relationship amongst the consumers and business models and just different um, way that they run their businesses, right? They have very similar relationships. Now, if we want to go ahead and take a look at a more simpler example, um, something perhaps with lower correlation, we can go ahead and take a look at low correlation, right? Low correlation example, or whoops, whatever. Uh, a low correlation example, perhaps lower than Coca-Cola and Pepsi, could be something such as a technology company such as Apple. All right, so if we take a look at Apple and let's say Pepsi, all right. Now they have very low correlation with each other. So, and that's the idea with the holy grail of investing. You want to find uh, different assets that have low relationships with each other. So instead of just investing, let's say half your money in Coca-Cola and half your money in Pepsi. And again, this is just a hypothetical because they have a high correlation with each other. Again, a high relationship, similar business models, similar, many different things it's a lot riskier, it's actually riskier to go ahead and invest in these companies, even if you think they're gonna make really great returns. According to Ray Dalio, it's better to actually go ahead and invest in let's say Apple and Pepsi, because you already pretty much take care of this sort of relationship. You can think of uh, consumer products with Pepsi. So you're better off going ahead and cutting it down by 50% with 
uh, having this other product, Apple. And even Apple might not be the best example because technically they have considered a product of the iPhone. So you could even uh, try and break down even further. Let's, um, let's go ahead and take a look at like a zero correlation, right? Zero correlation. And we can think of a company such as uh, Tesla. Tesla and you go ahead and say uh, Coca-Cola. Right. So with Tesla and Coca-Cola, obviously they have no really relationship with each other. Right? It's pretty pretty low correlation, low relationship. I mean, zero relationship at this point because you don't need Coca-Cola to make Tesla vehicles and you don't need Tesla to make Coca-Cola vehicles and they have really no space between each other. Right? And you can even think of Tesla as a technology company just because they're doing a lot of other innovations uh, within uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning and all that stuff as well. So they're definitely much more of a technology company, even though technically one could argue that they're consuming, you know, cars. You don't really need to have a Tesla car, but they're doing a lot of other technological advances as well. So you can consider Tesla as a technology company, whereas Coca-Cola is more of a consumer product company. And they have zero correlation with each other. They have zero relationship with each other. Therefore, technically speaking, according to the holy grail of investing, investing half your money in tesla and investing the other half into coca-cola is much more sound than investing into coca-cola and pepsi because they have completely different relationships with each other and that's the main idea with this holy grail of investing graph you want to go ahead and again maximize the amount of returns you're taking while minimizing the amount of risk you take on by uh deferring your relationships among the assets that you invest in and you can even further go ahead and break this down by perhaps taking a look at the 11 sectors of the stock market. You can break down those 11, 11 sectors to uh, maybe having one stock within each. And now you have 11 different stocks that have lower correlation than if you were to do, I don't know, let's say Apple and Microsoft. Right? That's another example of very high correlation. They're both technology companies, you know, really great tech companies. Um, and they have similar, again, business models and consumer uh, goods and things like that. They would be, you know, a poor example of uh, to ideally, again, according to the Holy Grail of investing, a good investment. You want to go ahead and maybe split it with Microsoft and some other company that's not technology. Again, out of the 11 sectors, you can go ahead and do something like, uh, uh, what is it, healthcare. All right, so you could do perhaps like a Johnson & Johnson and then Microsoft. And now with the Holy Grail of investing, it's a lot higher of a return while keeping that risk a lot lower than compared to, again, uh, two technology companies. So you can also use it as well. And if you take a look at the actual graph, you'll see the, the ideal situation is to have anywhere from 10 to 20 stocks or pretty much assets that you're invested in. So again, with our examples, we're just keeping it to the world of stock market investing. So you can have anywhere from 11 to, uh, sorry, 10 to 20 different stocks, and you're able to actually go ahead and lower the amount of risk you take on when investing into those stocks. So if you do all the 11 different, um, you know, uh, sectors of the stock market, you know, like healthcare, real estate, technology, and all the other ones, and I'll make sure to leave a link below in case, you know, you don't know all 11, as long as you diversify your portfolio into those different sectors, because they have low relationships, you'll be able to minimize the amount of risk you take on while maximizing the amount of return you actually get on your initial investment. And that's why with the holy grail of investing, Ray Dalio absolutely loves diversification. And you can tell right from the Holy Grail graph because the idea is to diversify as much as possible and make sure that when you have different relationships or assets with different relationships, um, it minimizes, again, your risk. And it makes sense, right? Because we don't, none of us can really tell the future. We don't know what's going to happen. I mean, for example, right? I mean, the pandemic happened, very unfortunate. Now, other sectors reacted differently to different sectors, right? I mean, uh, what is it, like the energy sectors and the uh, transportation sectors are terrible, right? Airlines and uh, what is it, the cruises and all those uh, sectors, they're terrible, right? But you can bet your money with uh, Clorox or like healthcare uh, companies, they did great, right? Because, I mean, we still needed to buy Clorox products to go ahead and clean and disinfect things, right? If you go ahead and diversify your portfolio, you're better able to weather the storm um, pretty much throughout life, you know, anything that life may throw at you. And so, yeah, so that's pretty much the main idea of the holy grail of investing. Maximizing the amount of return you make on your money while being able to minimize your risk that you take out when investing by diversifying your overall portfolio. Now, again, this was a more simplified version of it. 
usually with Ray Dalio, you're going to be investing not just in the stock market. You're going to invest in stocks, you're going to invest in gold, real estate, all the different assets you can think of, and then have a, a anywhere from 10 to 20. But you can use this perhaps in your real estate investing or perhaps in your stock market investing by looking at different industries. Now, I don't personally invest in real estate, but maybe by doing different locations. I don't know. But again, the idea is the same with having low relationships amongst the different um, assets that you own within that asset class that should help you with a minimizing the amount of risk you take on. Again, why? Because you can't ever really tell the future. And so when, you know, Clorox is doing great, healthcare is doing phenomenal, but we have, I don't know, um, we have energy sectors and transportation sectors doing terrible. Well, okay, luckily you've invested in this healthcare sectors and they're doing good. Uh, but your portfolio went down because you have all these transportation se uh, sectors and um, energy sectors. Well, maybe that's a time you can actually go ahead and invest and take advantage of, of you know, those low, um, those low prices. And eventually over time, they should improve and vice versa. Sometimes we're going to be in, in times throughout our lives where healthcare is going to be doing really poor and for whatever reason, and energy is going to be doing great, right? So it helps allow us to sort of adjust throughout these different uh, tides that we have to face throughout life. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, taking a look at the Holy Grail of Investing by Bray Dalio. Let me know what you guys think, if you guys agree, if you guys don't agree, maybe you guys, you know, interpret it in a different way. Please feel free to let me know in the comments below. I truly hope you guys are having a great day today. Remember, it's a great day to have a great day. So have a great day. Thanks for watching.